Well, good morning and welcome to the 2011 United States Disc Golf Championship, the Performance Edition. That's right, Billy, we've arrived. The vibe feels the same in the air. We're getting ready to see a lot of great shots, maybe a lot, of, some bad shots. We hope more good than bad, but it's gonna be an exciting day, week. This is the USDGC. Well, I think really the theme this year is the experience. We have so many, I guess we call them newbies, on the grounds that are experiencing this feeling for the first time and I'm reciprocating it back and it, it really feels <laughs> great. I mean, I, I just haven't had so many hugs in so many weeks, Liz. You bet, you know, every there you can feel the love. You can always feel the love in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Well, we are in Rock Hill. This is Winthrop Gold. And here's a quick abbreviated look at the course. Well, this is the first hole at the USDGC, number one, 224 feet. This is simply a must get, even though this is the biggest butt puckering shot on the course, as you've just heard your name announced. Again, 224 feet straight downhill. There's a 21 feet drop on elevation. And you can see that you've got to manipulate the two new trees they've put in and really play the ground. Let's go down now and take a look at the sloping green. Hole number six here at USDGC. It's 371 feet and is a potential deuce opportunity. However, they have just planted a brand new tree right off the tee pad. In the past, players would take a large sweeping hyzer. This year, they are gonna be forced to keep their shots straight, which will also bring that OB water that we just saw in the last hole back into play. Oh boy, this is a tricky green now. This is a beach green. This is kind of unique to the USDGC. However, you are gonna wanna use all of that sand to slow your disc down as you come into this green. It's about 10 feet to the edge there at the water, and boy, you have to decide on whether or not you're gonna run your putt or lay up. What an amazing course of Winthrop Gold. They're, it's so well manicured. There's our lines everywhere and just the heart of people taking care of this place. It's really amazing to be on the property here at the well, university. Don't forget about the five miles of yellow rope. <laughs> well, we've shown you some of the course, but the big thing here this week is the experience. And let's let you experience some of the players now. Let's go meet some players. Uh, I'm Ricky Martin, I'm from Mobile, Alabama. First time here. I'm uh, Derek Drew. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. It's my first time here. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody in the Southern Nationals. My name is John Key. I'm from Dustin, Florida. I'd like to give a shout out to my sisters and Key Chains Bike and Disc. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. Third time at the USDGC out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Big shout out, Skyline Disc Golf. Watch the video blog, thediscgolfguy.com. Awesome. Brock Searle, Golden Raker, 12 years here at the USDGC. And it looks like this is going to be the best one we've ever had. Really excited about the performance edition. Players are going to love their packages, and they are in for a rude awakening on the course if they haven't played with some gold already. They're going to find out. I'm uh, Ben Abonik from Franklin, Wisconsin. Uh, first time playing any major tournament, traveling for disc golf. Yeah, my man. first time, so really looking forward to the challenge. Hi there, I'm Sam Ferentz from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I'd like to thank my sponsor, Enema Champion Discs. Hi, I'm Juho Randalajo from Finland. That's approximately 4,000 miles away. And say hello to home. Hi, I'm Dave Donapace from Enema Champion Discs. 
I'd like to give a shout out to the ice fishermen in Finland. I know it's off season, but you know, they still need some attention. Correct. And my name is Jussi Meresma uh, from Discmania and also play with Dinova Discs. Hi, I am Zeppo Popaju from Finland, Littoinen. Uh, that's my second uh, USDTC and I use Discmania. Hi, I'm Terry Roddy, PDGA number 4380. I'm from Towson, Maryland. Uh, Paul Berge, PDGA number 17842 from Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, Hi, wife. <laughs> I'm Pat Searle, 16350, 2000 World Champ. And Well, I know I'm having a great time meeting all these new players out here, Billy. It's just a great field this year. Oh, I love the love, even with the Billy tree involved from last night at the players meeting. Now, if you really want to know what's going on today, we're going to show you right now, because here's some live action from the first round of the 2011 USDGC. Well, hello and welcome to some live action here at the United States Disc Golf Championship. That's right, Billy. This is right where it all takes place. This is hole number one right outside the shack. You've got an audience. You've got people coming up on 18. This is where it all begins. Well, you can see sort of loosening up on the tee right now. One of the privileges of winning the AM World Championships, and that's Kenny Glassman we're talking about, is getting to play with a champion here at the USDGC, and he has Mr. Ken Climo in his group today. Yeah, absolutely not only playing with the champion, but has the last tee time. How convenient. Well, he also has Michael Burton in the group and Donald Perkins. We'll tell you right now that Michael Burton's projected score is 79. And that Donald Perkins is projected at 80. Well, Kenny Glassman, your AM World Champion, projected score at 74. This is a par 68 course. How about the man himself, Liz? Oh boy, he's got to shoot really well today. His projected score is a 63. If he wants to see good performance numbers, he's going to have to fire in the 50s. Well, I did a lot of math all night long, and I'm ready to give you some stats as we go through. We're going to have Michael Burton on the tee first. This is your 12:20 tee time Wednesday afternoon the USDGC Performance Edition. Well, a beautiful day, Liz. I'm gonna say maybe 72, 73 degrees, light wind. Just can't get much nicer. You're right, Billy. Uh, it's gorgeous down here in South Carolina. Michael Burton's on the pad now. He is no stranger to the game. He's been playing since 2000. He's currently rated 939. Well, the problem here, Liz, is it doesn't matter about your rating or anything else. It's Mr. Andy Green, when he pronounces your name, and there's the man himself, the 12-time world champ, the five-time U.S. champ. Here's Ken Climber. He's heard his name mentioned a few times before, before he tees, I think. Oh, yeah, I don't think any of those nerves come into play well, for him. Liz. That's ace run high. But All it's nice going to get a general. little neg skip right near the bucket. Great well start played. there by the champ. His projected score on this hole is a two, so he needed that to start, Liz. <laughs> no kidding. Now that's it, As you mentioned earlier, that does put a lot of pressure on these uh, top-level players. They're expected to get a two on this hole. They want to get a two, but man, when it's written down like that, that changes the whole game. Well, Kenny Glassman, AM World Champ. That's got to slow down, Liz. Oh, it slowed down right into that tree. Yeah, he's going to have himself a nice little easy up and down for his three. His first hole at the USDGC, I know he is extremely excited. And here's Donald Perkins to the tee. He's got a projected score today of 80. That's right, okay, he's laying something down. It's, it's a good looking shot, it's Liz. It's low, all he's gotta do is scoot up a little bit. It's gonna get him just outside the circle. This is the last card today, 12-20 tee time, and this is the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. Well, the tension and the pressure getting to Mr. Burton, as that one might have slipped out just a little. That's right, he's just barely off the front of the tee pad. It's almost like the exact same shot all over again, just this time not on the tee pad. Well, he is at the gap, about 60, 65 feet off, and here is the shot he's looking for. Just get it down there. That's a good looking shot, Liz. You bet, it's downhill and right under the bucket. He's gonna card himself a three, which is his projection on this hole. Well, as they make their way down, 
you know, I hear sounds in the background. I hear the water running from this beautiful fountain here on the grounds of Winthrop Gold. It's really a unique place. Players don't get to come here, and they come from all over the world when this tournament is in progress. Well, speaking of the world, here's your AM world champion, Kenny Glassman. And he's going to give this thing a run. We've seen him make plenty of big putts this year in Rochester, Liz. Oh, yeah, you're right, Billy. I mean, he is well outside the circle. He has a little bit of a ceiling to contend with if he is going to loft putt. But This is 52 feet, 7 inches, Liz. Oh, it's up. Oh, good bid by Kenny Glassman, at least. Well, he'll have himself an easy drop in three. All right, I'm excited to see some of these birdies that these guys can lay down. Well, Donald Perkins, he's looking right now at an opportunity to match Mr. Kenny Climo. And you know, that's one of the stories these guys are gonna be able to go home and I beat Kenny Climo in that round or I took Kenny down on my favorite hole. Oh, it's up, he's got a chance. Oh, just hits the uh, yellow band across the top there. Look at those great baskets. They've got a red pole in the center. Very unique and uh, the United States Disc Golf Championship always on the cutting edge. All right. Okay. All right, here is a two attempt. Nice, as Mr. Glassman looked at Mr. Climo and said, uh, am I out, sir? And Mr. Climo said, yes, you are. So he calmly walked over. Going to be a great day for Kenny. Oh, you bet. All these guys look up to him so much, Billy. Everybody does. He's Ken, Ken Climo. Solid putt for Kenny Glassman, and I know Kenny's wanting to impress the champ with his play and let him know that he earned that world championship. So there's additional pressure. All right, Ken Climo with his two. Easily done. And finishing up is Michael Burton. Now Michael's going to cart a three. A little nervous drive, but he laid that one up right where he wants to. All right, and Donald Perkins going to also tap out for his three. Now this is the USDGC. It's on. This is the performance edition. We're going to show you some live action today from around the course. Well, we are here, we're on hole number three, and we are with a spectacular group, Liz. That's right, Dave Felberg is the uh, superstar on this card. He's rated 1040, he's got the lowest projected score all weekend, and now he gets to play with Mike McCormick, Patrick May, and Wyatt Hardenberg. Well, as expected, uh, as at least as I expected, the stud on this group, Dave Felberg, he's on the tee, this is hole three, 389 feet. That's right, what a tricky toll too. I mean, you have to absolutely be confident of your line or fade off right to the trees, which it looks like Dave has done. He's gonna find some tree branch there and it did penetrate through, but whew, it's a tough bush to get out of. That is a definite tough bush. There's some wind out here and you know, it's, it's hidden wind from up on that tee pad. Now here's Patrick May coming to the tee. Patrick, wearing the colors today, he's a member of the 2009 that's right, he's 955 rated, so he's right up there. The other two players are 899 rated. That's, you know, Felberg is almost 120 points above those ratings, 140 points above the 899 ratings. What a, what a treat for these guys to be able to play with him. No doubt. Uh, Patrick, part of what I was trying to say was part of the Augusta State National Champion team. Oh, oh that's that trouble is. That's definitely OB. That's OB early. He's going to have to retee. Now that's Mike McCormick, and that's not what he wanted. Right, well, he's got another chance here. There's a beautiful hawk circling above that tee. I don't know if he's... He's trying to catch it. some birdies. Oh, he is going well right here. He's in on one, he's out on two. He's going to be laying three over. Oh, he got the kind of friendly kick to this front side of that bush, but boy, let's see how they handle it now. Well, Wyatt coming up now. I'll tell you, these guys, not only are they getting to play with Dave, which is a lot of pressure, but they just heard their name not long ago announced and they're on the USDGC track right now and, and there's tension everywhere, Liz. That's right, well, Wyatt's been playing since 2005. He knows this tournament, but you know, he, I don't believe he has ever played it. Although he has played it the best out of all of them. Nice Absolutely. job, Wyatt. Absolutely, great shot right there. We're gonna let this group come on down to us. This is Dave Felberg's group, first day at the USDGC. 
Well, we got Mike McCormick. He's laying three, and you know he's got an opportunity to get up and down. But with that OB rope about eight paces from the basket list, it is a dangerous shot. You bet. You know his his easiest shot is going to be a step out Anheuser shot, but it's a blind shot. He can't see the basket, and all he can see is the yellow rope. So he's going to have to challenge the airspace over those yellow ropes if he wants to get near the bucket. Well, Mike McCormick, he's an 8.99 rated player. His projected score today is 86. So if he can get up and down, he's going to cart himself a five and not hurt himself too bad. Oh, it's up. It's got to hold it. Well, he did land with enough space to attempt a putt. Well, we've got Patrick May here. He landed in bounds on his first attempt, and it looks like he's going to just play a safe layup oh, to card himself a three and move on. Simple layup there for Patrick. He's enjoying that. Take the three. Well, here we go now. Uh, Dave Felberg's projected score on this exact hole, his personal par, is a two. I don't think that's going to be a possibility. Well, I tell you, it's almost unfair, Dave. He has to shoot six under the course par 62 every day just to card a par. And like you say, Liz, hole one and this hole, his projected score is a two. Well, it looks like he just chipped out. Give himself a nice, easy putt. Well, Mike McCormick... Uh, he was in on one out on two, over oh, on three. Boy. He lays four here. Yeah, he's got that. a really awkward shot, and the OB is behind him. If he hits cage and rolls, I mean, he can roll right OB if he's not smart. He took it out of play, just plopped it up there. That's his fifth shot, so he's going to card a six on this hole, which is actually two over his projected score. That looks like Dave now is uh, telling Wyatt, uh, you're out. I'm yeah, just marking. Dave out. is definitely in charge of this group, Liz. What do you bet? I mean, he is 100 ratings points above most of these players. and I mean, he, he knows golf. He knows what he's doing. Right. Although, Wyatt, Wyatt what a Bird. great shot by Wyatt. Now, if he can make this putt, that's got to gotta sting for well, the other his, players on this His card. projected score on this hole is a four, so this is like an eagle for Wyatt. Oh, and he nailed it. Nice job, Wyatt. No, he's got a projection right now of 85 for the day, and that too is going to lift him right to where he needs to be. Here's David Felberg for a three, which is actually like a bogey to Dave. Yeah, you bet, Billy. He played this hole pretty well. He did what he, exactly what he had to do. Well, with an errant tee shot in the woods, that's the best thing he could do. He gets up and down for his three, and he looks like he's a little frustrated. I wonder if he's looking at these projected scores and putting extra pressure on himself, Liz. Well, he would have to. The top performers of this tournament have to perform absolutely at their best. Patrick May tapping in his par is a great little upshot he made. This is one of the powerhouse groups here. With the first day of the US DGC, this is hole number three. Just a little 389 footer downhill. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching Ken Climo literally pure hole number one. And then Dave Feldberg, maybe not such an easy time on hole three, but getting out of there with a the par. Well, he is a champion. Now we're going to break away for some action, and we're going to give you a look back at the USDGC in years past. This is Will Schustrich, and that's an aggressive line. That is threatening the OB. Inbounds, he is safe. Will throws it right to Billy. He is about two inches. I can look down, I can see the line through this. He's safe, he's got a 50 foot death putt. That's not what he wants. It is 431 feet. The state of Kansas is the flag on this hole, and there's UC shot. He needs one skip. I do not think he's going to get it. With a two-stroke lead, here's Nico LeCastro. With two errant shots by Will Schuster, and Will's going to have to be aggressive all the way to the house if he wants this title. Oh, Nico's throwing a great shot. I like it. That's got a chance. If he can get one release, he's on the green. Oh, he hits the path. That's bad luck. He's going to go OB long. 
And there goes the lead right now as Nico's got a two-stroke lead. He's now throwing three from the tee. Anything could happen as that was an unfortunate right. kick, but this tournament is nowhere near over yet. <laughs> Will Schustrick barely inbounds 50 feet from the bucket. An easy layup decision for him. Now here's Nico, and Nico can assure you is going to be aggressive again. And Nico's took a big line again. He does not need to hit it. It's looking like he's going to hit it again. He's got it again. It's up on the edge. And Nico is rolling, rolling. Oh, B, Nico is in on one out of two, in on three out of four. He's now throwing five, and he is coming apart at the seams on the tee. On his fifth shot, he's got a two-stroke lead right now, but that has vanished, and that's going to make Will Schustrich's layup super easy. I'd hate to be in Nico's head right now. There's at least three guys arguing, and he needs to lay up. Going to be aggressive again. He hits that path again, and there goes Nico. He almost hits the building. This is going to hit earth. This is going to stick, and he is going to have the proverbial death putt, and that could be the tournament for Nico LeCastro. Making his way to the team, Michael Johansson, fresh off a of seven on the last hole. Hole number 14 here. A simple little hole, but it certainly is taking its toll on the leader. Michael Joe going right at it. He needs to hook up soon. And Michael Joe's going to be safe. He'll have the proverbial death putt, and the drama has begun as the pressure cooker all over Nico will let him come down to the green. Well, Nico just laying up. And Nico laying six, and that's going to be a seven. Will just looking to get up and down. Oh, he does. Uh, Will's going to take an easy three, and he's going to take the lead back. That's unbelievable here on hole number 14. Nico throwing two OB off the tee. He now lays six under the bucket. He's going to have an easy seven, but he's going to give up four strokes. He had a two-stroke lead coming in, so he's going to now be down by two. Michael Joe over the top, and it sits. Now you see Medesma making his way for his death putt. Oh, you see his Citre. Stands in disbelief. We'll let him come in as Michael Joe will have to tap for his par. Will Schuster going to tap out his par. Nico going to tap out his seven. Will Schuster now has a two stroke lead. Four holes to go. And anything could happen. We still have to play the infamous hole 17. What a day of golf. The two man race and the pressure cooker is showing itself today. Michael Joe with an easy three there. And now UC will move in for his three. We'll move over to hole 15 next, oh. as it's anybody's game. What? No, I thought I made it. Well, as you can see, the history of the USDGC, the drama just builds every year. And Nico and Will really coming to a head right there on hole 14 last year. That's right. You know, it's a battle to get a champion every year. Now let's go over and have Dave Felberg give us a keen look at hole number three. Hi, I'm Dave Felberg, 2005 USDGC champion. Today I'm going to give you a keen look of hole three. One of my favorite holes, 389 foot par three, really decides how your round's gonna go when you turn the corner. You play hole one, easy birdie, some people think, and then you play hole two, one of the hardest par fours. When you come off hole two, you walk up to majestic hole three, it's downhill, and it's a birdie that a lot of pros want to get. The problem is, is the danger. I've seen players come around that corner and think they're going to get an easy two and take a seven. And how that happens is, so you can see there's a skirting OB that runs around the left side. If you don't land in bounds, you're going to re-throw at stroke and distance. And prior to the stroke and distance, you always re-teed on this hole. 
So three has always been kind of what we say a tide turner. If you get the deuce, you may be onto a good round. If you throw it out of bounds and take a six, five, six, seven, it could end your round real quick. You come off one, two, three, five over, you haven't even got to the teeth of the course yet. So let's talk about how people play it. When I attempt to come up to this hole, I look at it and I think, how can I throw a disc near the basket but never throw it out of bounds? And that would be to throw a disc out towards the tree line and let it come just inside of it. Even if I've thrown it too hard left, it doesn't have enough room to get out of bounds. And I think that's what most players are trying to do. What tends to happen is people get nervous and throw a disc that doesn't go left enough and they throw it down toward the tree line and they throw it right into the trees. And when you'll see when we get down there, that's not an easy three either. A lot of players will then take fours and maybe fives trying to get out and throwing OB again. So if you're going to throw it at the tree line, you have to trust your disc and let it come in front of the tree line towards the bucket. Now a lot of other players I see really try to play it safe. They tend to take a sidearm and throw it out over the OB or a turnover and bring it left to right across the fairway. In that scenario, you probably will get easy threes and land under the bushes pin high, but you're not going to make very many twos. The other problem with that is, is you're throwing it over a hill, over an OB, and you can't feel the wind. As Billy would call it, blind wind. Blind wind's coming up this hill, and if you throw it and expose it over the OB, it may not come back. So I think the safe and pro play is to throw it at the trees with a mid-ranger driver and let it hyzer just in front of the trees. Even if you come up short, you'll be in bounds. Let's go down and take a look at the green and see what I was talking about and see where your disc will land and talk about your opportunities to score when we get down there. So as you can see, we're down here about halfway to the hole and uh, the basket's down here. But here's these trees I was talking about. What I said is most players get nervous and turn it into the trees or throw it straight into the trees. As you can see, under these trees in this area back here, that's not too easy. So if you throw it in there, you better have a really good low forehand or two finger roller or be prepared just to play it for a four. And like I said in my interviews about this tournament, think about it. If you're scheduled to take a four on the hole, play it for a four. Maybe you'll get lucky and make it out and make a putt, make a three and get a birdie. Don't try to score a two just because you think you're supposed to get a two because your handicap allows you to have that space and take advantage of that. So if you can get in these trees, the further you throw into the trees, the better your out will be. A lot of players tend to do this shot, but they leave it short back here. If you land under these trees, you won't have much of an opportunity. But if you throw it high and you crash into the trees back there, as you'll see, there's the sunlight that's sneaking through. There's some gaps. You'll be able to pitch out and probably get a three, maybe at worst a four. All right, we're here at the green. As you can feel, there is a little, oh, no wind right now. See, that's the tricky part about this hole. If you look over there, you'll see that there's some trees in the distance are moving, but right here, there is no wind. And that's the pocket I was talking about. Sometimes you can't figure it out. So playing a shot that just chops into here, like I talked about, gives you a better opportunity to make birdie. It doesn't park the hole, but it guarantees you an inbound shot. Now, if you're gonna try to park the hole, you have to notice that the the OB is inside the circle here. I mean, that's probably about 29, 30 feet. So going for the pin, you have to throw a very accurate shot. And as you see, there's some downhill, downhill little angled depressions. If you catch those on the way down, you tend to skip OB. So if you're gonna go for the bucket, throw a higher shot so that when you come in, you catch more land. If you come in low, you'll tend to skip out of bounds and you'll have to re -tee. Now let, let's walk over here a little bit. As you see, these are those wooded pockets I was talking about. If you're short, you don't have anything, but now that you see pin high, there's these little gaps. So if you're gonna crash it, make sure you get at least pin high so you can get up and down. Finally, don't forget about the OB long. It's a little longer than it is here, but it's still about 30, 35 feet. So just remember, hole three is a good opportunity to score. It's a good opportunity to get your round going. I think most players in this tournament, even in this handicap event, could probably get a shot down here. So just take your time. Take your chance to score, and this was your keen look by Dave Felberg, 2005 USDGC champ. Well, let's send you guys back out onto the course to check out another champion, Barry Schultz. Well, this is some more live action golf for you, and we're going to pick up another champions group, Liz. We've got Travis Dick, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Lockwood, Lockwood, Kyle Motti, and Barry Schultz, the three-time champion. They're coming off of a tough hole, number five. 
and I believe Kyle had a tough time on that one. We're going to pick him up on number six, which is a beautiful 371 footer known as the beach hole. Well, as we might expect, Liz, it is the three time champ holding the box here on number six. You're right, Billy. He played the last hole solid. He played the hole before that solid. But again, he has a huge uh, benchmark to reach here. I mean, he's one of the champions. He's got to shoot a phenomenal score to get a good performance level here. Well, his projected score on this hole is a two. Well, it looks straight. It does look like it's going to chop the corner down. That is... That's trouble. That is wet, Liz. That he is, is definitely OB. And a one, add on two, and a re -t for Mr. Schultz. He took a six early on on hole number two, got caught up behind the pump house. And I'll tell you, a three-time champ or not, it is gonna take every bit of Barry's mental ability because these are slow rounds, Liz. We're talking almost six hours, and I hate to say it, but these just are not some of the best shots that we're gonna see. Well, here's his second shot. He's definitely playing wide right. I mean, he's not running the green anymore, and wow, that grass is fast down here. That one always trying to make its way into the water. Phew, I hope the other guys saw how short this grass is cut up here. Well, here's Jeremy Lockwood coming up now. Jeremy is uh, projected at 79. All right, he's got one up in the air, and he's definitely well, playing he's safe, release. but that Good skip release. is Trouble. going in the water as well. That grass is about a quarter of an inch long up here, and it is on hard ground. Well, and Kyle Motti was on the way to the tee, turned around and went back, saw the red flag come out. If you've ever been to the championship, oh, you do not like red, you like green. You know, Jeremy now, you know, one out on two. This is his third shot. Right now, I, there has been a change to this hole uh, from last year. If you can see that tree right off the front of the tee pad, that's gonna really cinch the line for these guys and make them throw that tight shot. That is so dangerous. Oh, well, he got fortunate there. I mean, he hit some wood chips or that might've flared in the water as well. Yeah. I'm making his way to the tee now. This is Phoenix Disc Sports. If you've got a pair of quad shocks on your back, this guy right here is the reason why. This is Kyle Motti. Yep, now he's out of Colorado. Uh, a great contributor to our sport. And, you know, he had a rough time on that last hole. Let's see if he can shake it off and get his performance back on this hole. Well, Kyle's projected score oh. is an 81. Well, I mean, he can get a three from there, Billy. Well, he got caught up in that early little tree. And, and like you said, Liz, they put that new tree in. And I mean, you're no longer allowed to take that power hauser away from the water. You've got to throw a, a stable disc down the middle of this fairway. Now here's Travis Dick on the tee. That's right, he just, uh, he played the last hole phenomenally, but you know, he caught some trouble on the green, right around the putting green. Now this looks like it's coming in high enough to stab into the ground and stick, but again, what a tricky little shot. Well, he's about 70 feet short. We're gonna let him come on down. This is a great hole. Number six, 371 footer at Winthrop Gold. This, he's got it over there. I mean, he's still got to deal with that tree. This is not the easiest of shots. No, this is in fact quite a hard shot. He's gonna have to like, make his disc form an S. And he, the hard That's part, trouble is. He's gonna have to slow down. Oh boy, that is a good tree. That was a wonderful tree as that thing was heading in. And it's such a touchy shot. Jeepers. Well, Kyle Motti looks like he could potentially still be out here after uh, hitting a tree off the tee pad, hitting another tree on his approach. But wow, that tree saved him from adding another stroke by going uh, in the water. Well, I'm just really digging what's going on over there. Kyle's got his dad on the back. A great family. Big, huge contributors to our sport. Oh, that's okay there. That'll get up here. Phew, it's close though. He's playing with fire today, yeah. I tell you what. I tell you, he's gonna take a four. His projected score is a three, so. Now we're moving on to Travis Dick, and he is butted up right against a tree. Well, he's every bit of about maybe 65 to 70 feet. He is not putting at the water, but he absolutely can't short arm it here, Liz. No, not at all. Can you imagine playing with the pressure of, you know, Barry Schultz is on your card. Uh, you're playing at the USDGC. The wind is starting to pick up this afternoon. Cameras just joined your group. <laughs> These guys are feeling the pressure and they are getting the full USDGC experience, Liz. All right, now we are on Jeremy Lockwood's shot. He went OB on his first shot, I believe, and this is his second shot that was trying to get there. Well, he lays three here. This is a big putt. This is about a 47 foot, three inch putt. And if he can get this thing in, it'll be huge. He's actually projected to score a three here. So if he doesn't get this in, he's looking at a five. 
All right, it's low. Okay, well, not even really a, a bid, definitely a layup. Well, he just uh, he saw that water. He does not want to add any numbers up. Plus, they're coming off of the most infamous water hole that we've got. Now, here's our three-time champ. Sorry, he lays three right now as well. Well, Barry, I'll give this a shot right here for at least metal to be drawn. But Yeah, it's a, it's a better angle to be looking at this putt, too. You've got beach behind you, but obviously he, he doesn't look like he ran that. Well, just it's hard to draw the energy up, Liz for six consecutive hours and we're we're a third of the way through and these guys are two hours into their round so you do the math oh yeah look at all those slump shoulders billy it's it's going to be an all-day affair here well somebody just had some fun barry you're out i know that's what they told him been wanting to see a little love there from kyle jeremy gonna move in now and tap in this is hole number six aka the beach hole we're gonna stay with this group, Liz. This is a great group here. We're gonna get over to another great hole, the bamboo hole. This is first round coverage from the 2011 USDGC Performance Edition. Whew, what an exciting hole that was, hole six. A lot of guys going OB. Moving on to hole number seven here. This is the bamboo hole. Oh, this is just so sweet, Liz. I mean, you've got options. I believe Barry Schultz likes that straightforward route right down the middle, but you're gonna see a big high hyzer on the right side, maybe a spike hyzer on the left. Could even see a hook thumb or a pancake on this hole. Absolutely. Now, what the players are doing now in the slight delay, they get to turn their scorecards in, actually, so we can be live updated here. Oh, there's Travis Dick and Lucky here. I seen Kyle Marty warming up the hook thumb. Here's Travis Dick with the hook thumb on number seven. Oh, 269. you know this shot. Is that going to work out? Oh, yeah, that's in there. Wow. That's, uh, um, wow. That is how you do it. Threw it right at the bucket. She sat down nicely. He trained her proper. And Kyle Marty might. Be looking at a left-handed shot here, Liz. He is, I believe. Oh boy, Kyle. Kyle had some big trouble on number five. Tough on number six, but he handled it well. And he's All right, he looks like he maybe tried to be a but- That's trouble. Oh boy, that is gonna definitely sail over the fence in B.O.B. Uh, he hit the top of the fence. If he hits the fence, he bounces back. He's gonna be in bounds. He hits the top of the fence, he jumps over. Three T, oh boy, throw what? in three. Yeah, and that <laughs> the spotter down there gave him the green flag right off the bat, and then he realized it was the green flag and threw up the red real quick. So what a little mini heart attack Kyle probably had up on the tee pad. Well, let's see if he's, it looks like he's going right-handed here. No, he's back to the left hand. He is amphibious. <laughs> oh boy, this one Almost the same looking shot, is, Liz. Yeah, it's, hopefully it's gonna stable up there. Okay, that one's in, it's on the putting green. That is safe sliding in the back door. Back door action, you bet. Although it's going to leave him a good putt. Now that'll be his putt for four. Kyle's projected score here is a three. Now here's a three-time champ himself. It's Mr. Schultz. A little bit of a wind kicking up uh, starting midday here. It's really calm this morning, but again, just like Winthrop, the wind will be up this afternoon. Well, you know, you would have thought Kyle would have had some love. This Boy, is the column. definitely going off to the right. It's going to hit the bamboo. Uh, he's going to be... Uh, he is about an inch away from the bamboo. We'll see if he goes through the fence or up and over. Uh, Jeremy Lockwood uh, step into the tee. This hole is uh, the Colorado hole. And you think Kyle Monty, being from Colorado, would have got some extra love. There's the big high, but that's not far enough, Liz. No, but it might land right in the center of the gap there. Inside, Billy. What a great shot there. Sits him down inside for the birdie opportunity. Let's get on down to the green. Is Kyle Monty in trouble? Everybody else with an opportunity for birdie. Wow, this is a really tricky shot for Barry Schultz and uh, everyone on this hole. You just... It's such an awkward putting stance. This is something that players don't see on a regular basis around their hometowns. This is unique to the USDGC. Well, Barry's a creative player. He may reach through, but he may try to go up and over and float it in. Now, he's gonna reach through. This is a difficult level of about 10.3. You bet, you know, if he's just gonna use that arm motion, that lofty putt that he has, he may find success if he just could go up and down, but whew. Well, it was a good bit, if anything else. It's going to get him a three. Oh, he had the right torturance. Just needed to tweak his furtherance. Well, Kyle Mati is going to attempt his putt now. This is not for a birdie. He did go OB on the first shot. But he is inside the circle. It's 
solid putt from Cal. He was just outside the circle, yeah, apparently. Apparently. That is Jeremy Lockwood, and he got himself inside of the circle for a putt. Now this here is about a 21 footer. Should be money, Liz. This would be for a two. Oh, there he goes. I'm sure that will help him out on wow. his score for number five, as well as he's about to make the turn into some of the hardest holes in disc golf. Well, he is projected at 79. Two in this hole is huge. Here comes Travis Dick. And Travis what an is, easy two with that hook thumb, Billy. Oh, you got to love it. It is a weapon. Barry Schultz going to tap out. This has been some live action from the first day here at the USDGC. We're going to get around the course and show you some more live action. Well, Barry not having the best of times while we were with him, but he is the consummate professional, kept a smile on his face, and everybody in the group seems to be enjoying themselves. You know, I, I think that's across the board, especially the guys that get to play with some of these superstars. This is what they're here for, to get a chance to see them play. Well, one of the biggest things here, in case you don't know, is the USDGC partners. You may be a USDGC partner yourself. Here's Jonathan Poole to let you know a little bit about that program. Well, we are lucky enough to be talking with Jonathan Poole, and today we're gonna kind of find out a little bit of what it means to the players here to be a part of the USDGC Rock program. Well, uh, what it means for the players is the money that it takes to put on the show. You know, I mean, from 2001 when we came out with the Champion Rock, that's when we knew we had something. I mean, it was magical from the very beginning, and the USDGC partners have bought into that, and they've stayed in, and uh, even with the changes, a little sketchy coming into this year with some of the changes, had to do a little, uh, you know, a little convincing that we were that we hadn't completely lost our minds. Um, but they get it, and we've got partners here who are who are playing for their first time. They'd never seen it, um, but you know, without that program, we couldn't put on this show. I mean, this was our budget for this event in recent years was pushing three hundred thousand dollars. Wow, I mean, that's a huge amount of money that you guys have to raise. Did you notice any difference? Um, you said you had to convince a few people, but I mean, for the most part, did everyone participate in the past and participate again this year? I think for the most part, it took them a little while. You know, I mean, I've, I've said the tide is turning is a phrase that I've kind of used. You know, we were, when we first made the announcement that we were gonna go to every other year, and then it was, well, we're gonna try something different. And then we really hit them with a curveball and said, we're gonna call it the same thing. Um, you know, that timeline of events was kind of lost in the shuffle with not just the partners, but the playing community. And it's just taken time for people to figure out what is going on. And a lot of the interviews this week, the very same thing. They're still trying to wrap their head around it. But, you know, in the end, that, you know, Innova's contribution is, is incredible. But most of the money comes from those rocks. And we, you know, the event kept growing. It was more and more expensive. And that program is based on those discs and their collectability. So, you know, I couldn't continue to crank out more discs um, without treading on the collectability. So we were, we were walking a fine line and we walked that for years. And, uh, you know, we knew we were going to need to find some kind of tournament model that will enable us to continue on for many years because that is what we intend to do. And uh, keeping that partnership intact is, is a pretty important part of it. Well, I know they're great looking to us every year and everybody is here to support. You know, there's a big long line traditionally every year. Everyone mm -hmm. loves them. And it sounds like you guys have gotten the support you needed this year, or at least so far. And, you know, we hope this program stays around for years to come. Yeah, well, you know, we had uh, just last week, you know, we, we sent out a message to partners saying, all right, here you go. You can pre-order the ones that you can get here next week. And uh, we had 600 discs set aside just for them. They sold out in a little over an hour. A, an hour for 600 discs. Now each Six, disc, how much are they paying for each disc? $25 a pop. Whew. Now I can't do math that fast, but I know that's a lot of money. And they paid $50 just to be a partner and to so to support it. And really that's the, a lot of them do it because they really believe in the event and they believe in us and they believe that we'll be good stewards of the money that is raised. Um, you know, but a lot of them are looking for those discs. And so it was, uh, it, they sold out quicker than what we thought, you know, with real short notice. But, um, you know, you figure 600 times 25 plus about 100 times 50. You know, we raised that in, you know, just a really short period of time. And that's, that has, you know, that and the staff, as we talked a lot about last night, those are the two things that make this possible. And, um, you know, the only other thing I just got to add to that is, a lot of the top players, you know, I hear this a lot. They just, well, why can't we just have six of these or 10 of these? Why can't, you know, this town or this promoter or this club just reproduce that? It's just not 
possible. It's just, it's, it's magic. You it know, has its own uh, surrounding special uh, attributes to it. So certainly. it's something that we look forward to every year. And I know the players out there, at least the vibe that I'm feeling and that our crew is feeling that they appreciate this event. And it's the first time a lot of them have gotten to experience it because of the partnership program. Right. We thank you very much for your time, Jonathan. Thank and you. for everyone out there, again, this is Jonathan Poole and Liz Carr. This is sponsored by Innova Champion Discs. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Jonathan Poole. Now I think it's time we can go out and check out some more live action. Well, here's some David Felberg and some five-time champ Ken Climo for you. It's a good looking day here on hole number 14. It's 431 feet, lots of OB coming into play, and it's a little bit different than it has been seen in the past. Yeah, they've re actually reversed the hole. Uh, where you're gonna see inside the yellow rope from the camera's perspective, left of the sidewalk is inbounds, and you can see the runaway green and the way they've got the rope placed down here. It is a treacherous green. You bet we, not only that, they're going to have to deal with some elevation change here. Well, it is a definite drop. And we've got a group that we're going to pick back up. This is David Felberg, Mike McCormick, Patrick May, and Wyatt Hardenberg. That's and, right. And, you know, we hear Dave Felberg is playing hot out there. And he's going to have to shoot a very hot to challenge a good performance score here. But uh, well, Ross score is score be 62. Beautiful. So I mean, he's got to shoot him a 62 to get his own projected par. And I believe he might be coming in under that. He's so hot right now, Liz. Well, he's on the box right now. Well, this is a great hole. This is the hole where the tournament oh, was won or lost. This looks straight. good, Liz. This is perfect. If it takes too big of a flare skip, he's going to find trouble. Perfect, Liz. He has got another birdie putt, and David Felberg is on the move. Whew. Patrick right. May to the tee right now. That's right. He's 955 rated, so he knows how to play this hole. He's going to attack it with a sidearm, which is going to net him a nice, easy spot in the fairway. Uh, he's almost guaranteed to be in bounds now. It'll be a matter of whether or not he can stop his up shot. And now on the TS, Mike McCormick. That's right. He's an 899 current rated player. Uh, oh, that's got a way to get past that tree. Definitely playing this shot extremely safe. Maybe even, do uh, you think that was an error to throw it over there? Well, the wind's picking up and it's rushing up that hill. When you step out from the edge of that building, that's the first thing you feel. And it's a little intimidating. So he probably played that a little safe, but he did get past the magnolia. But he's got a real touchy up shot coming in. Shoot, bright orange on the pad now. That is Wyatt Hardenberg. Well, Wyatt's been having a tough day. Everybody out here has been having a tough day. The wind is up. This is a good looking shot, Liz. It's got to stay in the air. This oh, is trouble. Oh, it's awfully high, Billy. It's going to have to spike down into the ground, but that's going to hit pavement and go OB. He'll re -tee. That will be a mistake. He's in on one, he's out on two, and now he's throwing three. Wyatt projected at eight. 85 today so if he can get this thing inbounds his projected score on this hole his personal par is a four he's throwing three now let's see if the, this young man from kentucky can keep it inbounds on this shot well he had almost enough to get there he just needed to get a little bit more to the right that's a little more yep. that's trouble oh, is that's, that's big trouble trouble that's going to be even earlier Oh boy, he's probably feeling the pressure now. Dave Felberg on the card. The cameras have just arrived. They're, he's looking at a corner full of people. Well, not only that, Liz, I'm sure he didn't have three discs he picked out to play this hole. Now he's got some different things. He may have to- Oh, he's going sidearm, Billy. He's changing the game plan completely. Well, it makes you wonder why he didn't follow Patrick and just get rounds. And, and that is a good looking distance on the sidearm. He's gonna have a tough up shot, but He's gonna be laying five there and Wyatt trying to stop the bleeding. We'll let him come to us here on the green, the number 14. Well, well, the Canadian representative here, Mike McCormick, is gonna be out. He threw a really, really safe shot, but he did get past the obstacle tree. I'll tell you, the, the wind is dying down right now, but this is such a scary shot, Liz. Oh, downhill, it's got a- I like it, Liz. Oh no, The direction Liz, it's much. going. It's got a dig. Oh, that's going to be OB for sure. No chance to get back and bounce. Yeah, he hits just on the curb. He's in on two. He's out on three. Well, he set himself up to play this hole safe, and I mean, that's just not how you play it. You have to keep well, it know. in bounds if you're going to choose to play safe. Oh, he took a little off of that one. It could be oh, trouble. Oh, boy, don't hit that road. That mid-range is going to have to sit down. I think he's okay, Liz. He is in bounds, Liz, and a big sigh of relief from him. Now throwing his 
fifth shot. He was in on one, out on two, in on three, out on four, up on five. He's actually throwing his sixth shot, Liz. This That's is right. Wyatt. You know, he still has a dramatic elevation change here on a runaway green. Um, he's got to be shaking up there. Well, this is a touchy little shot. You can see he's going to want to pitch the hyzer out, but if he comes in with the wrong angle, it will stand right up and roll a beat. You bet. And, you know, you can't even use this pavement here because the, the curbs are so tall. I believe that's going to be out, Billy. Good call, Liz. He hits near the OB. That'll be his third OB on this hole. He was throwing six there, so he'll be in on six, out on seven. He is now tossing a snowman. Yeah, his performance level is definitely suffering, I'd say, at this point during his round. You know, it's it's a very long day. These players have been out here. Well, the, they, the general round is about 4.15, Liz, and they've been out here for over four hours and still have six holes left to play. Whew. Well, we're going to let them come on down now as Wyatt got one inbounds. Patrick May now with a super safe side on. This is how you want to play the hole. He just wants to take his three. Didn't feel like he could reach it for a two, so he's going to take a three and try to get out of here. That's a smart golfer. Now, it's still a tricky shot. I mean, there's nothing easy about a downhill green surrounded by ropes. It's a great shot from Patrick. And if you don't know, Patrick is an all-American disc golfer from the Augusta State. Now moving in, you can see him strolling. He is having a big day. He's eyeballing us, Liz, as he is just really floating around. He is birdieing everything out here today. Well, that's right, he's definitely set himself up here. I don't even think that he's out. Um, possibly, I guess he's gonna go ahead and putt. Well, he's got it his- It sure seems like he is awful close to that basket. Well, he's pointing to Wyatt and uh, uh, He's gonna take his mark and back off, but he's got his personal caddy that came in. He's been his caddy here, Casey All's house out of Florida, Clearwater. And uh, he and Dave just really have a good chemistry. Oh, Wyatt Hardenberg here. To this is his to watch. keep it in the single digits, Liz. Oh boy, imagine the pressure on this shot. Oh, you know, at least he didn't fly by it. He is, he did hit the cage and landed right in front of it. So. He stayed in bounds. He's going to cart a 10, and you want to talk about a tough putt. Dave drove about 12 minutes ago. Here goes his birdie putt. Seems like he's in the groove. Touch the shoulder, touch the shoulder. Not a problem for Dave Felberg. He just looks so relaxed out here. He's really enjoying the day, and he's being the ambassador that we'd all hope he'd be. Now Mike McCormick gonna move in around the edge and... I tell you, these guys have just, you know, they read about these uh, elite players in magazines and, and see them on shows like this and this is their chance to be on their card. Well, it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, I know the first time I was put on a card with Ken Climo and Barry Schultz, I think I shot one of my worst rounds ever. You find out that you're thinking and you're worrying more about what those guys are thinking, which really has nothing to do with your game. Absolutely not. Well, Mike McCormick seemed like he could handle that shot just fine. Well, and again, Wyatt to clean up his putt. I would and say after is, uh, four and a half hours, the nerves should have wore off by now, Liz, and it's just a battle of each hole and trying to get whew, through it. I tell you, that was a hard putt, probably an angry putt. And that'll card a 10 for Wyatt. You never want double digits on any hole. What a great hole for Patrick May. He played it just how it should be. Now that's some live action here from the first day of the USDGC. Past champion, David Felbert's group. Well, a live action's what we told him we was gonna bring him, Liz, and there is the man. Oh, hole 17 at Winthrop Gold, this is it. And that has gotta hold some air here to get over. What a beautiful shot from the champ. 15 wow. feet, and that <laughs> came in so soft and gentle, Liz. I think he picked a spot on the green and said, I'm gonna put it right there, and he did. All right, Michael Burton now. I tell you, we don't see the nerves with Ken Climo, but I tell you, these guys have got to be feeling the nerves. I actually think this might be Don Perkins, and that's over too, Liz, another great shot. He's botching wow. Ken Climo. That's exactly what he's gonna tell his boys when he gets home. Look at this group go. They're not afraid, they wanna get done. They were the last tee time. They've got two holes to go. Uh, we believe we're, we don't have the best of angle. I believe this is Michael Burton here and Don just threw. Yeah, he's gonna attack a sidearm. That's uh, trouble, Liz. That, if, if it hits early and skips over, maybe. Mm. It tried, Liz. It definitely got a flare, but. Well, he's gonna have to tee again as he, until he gets one in here. Well, here's young Kenny Glassman's first chance to play hole 17. He's heard about it. He's dreamed about it. 
He's well, gonna have to wait just another minute. That's you bet. Not exactly what you want for the nerves. Michael now gonna try and get one. He's in on one, he's out on two, so this is his third shot. That's trouble, Liz. Oh, it's almost in the same spot. Maybe he'll hit off his other disc. And he hit the bales in the air there. Well, all right, you know, the basket is in a little bit of a different position. Uh, it has two different positions this week, and either position is difficult. The left position is harder than the position today. So. And this is considered the easier position of the two, no doubt. Well, now he has a forehand shot here. There is a very large bailout area for a forehand uh, to the right of the basket. Well, and that's what he's taking into play here, Liz, uh, and that he should be it. over. Oh, just barely, just barely on his safety shot. But he's in, and now he can make his way down here. And well, young what... Kenny Glassman now, <laughs> he's had to watch that. And let's see how the Am World Champ handles his first shot ever on the infamous number 17. I like it, Liz. Looks a lot like Ken Climo's shot to me. He's chosen to go on a little bit more uh, spacious part of the green, but again, he's on his first shot. Well, he's got about a 30-footer. He'll have an opportunity for a birdie putt. That's the AM World Champ we're talking about, playing with the legend himself, Ken Climo. We're gonna let him come on down to the green here. This is number 17, late in the day, the last group of the first day's action at the 2011 USDGC. I tell you, Liz, to be five hours and 15 minutes into the round and to have your elite status, I guess, questioned to look around and not see the Cam Todds and the, the Nate Dosses and the Avery Jenkins in your group, King Climo has the biggest smile of anybody on the property. I don't even know how to explain it, Liz. Well, you're 100% correct, and I think that's gonna, you'll see that bleed into how the other players around him are playing. I mean, more guys than not on his card threw it right into the green without any trouble, and I have to believe that that's part of the way that Ken Climo is uh, sending his vibe out over the group. It's a very positive, happy vibe. You know, we don't see that on every card. Well, here's some history for you. This is Kenny Glassman. He's going to be a great professional for years to come. This is his first attempt at a birdie on number 17. And Liz, you know, we've seen him make numerous putts from this distance. I'm going to say now, this is money. Well, Billy, here you go, here's your chance. Oh, sorry, you're wrong. It was off the front of the cage, but again, you know, a, a three here is not a four, is not a five, is not an 11, which we've already seen. So I think Absolutely. he's gonna be happy to walk away with a three. Well, Don moving in now and looks, oh. like, looks like he's gonna tell Kenny, you're inside of me, but I believe Don actually had him there, Liz. Oh, and such a, hmm. Now, well, this is how you do it, guys. You throw it up on the green, you calmly wait your turn, and then you drop the biscuit in the basket. That's right, here's Ken Climo, nerves of steel on a green that he knows well. All right, two birdies in a row for Ken Climo. Oh. Yeah, that's actually one as he missed the last putt a little high, but again, big smile, enjoying himself, and the group seems to be enjoying themselves. Very long rounds today. That's your live action for the 2011 first day here at the USDGC. I'm Billy Crump. And I'm Liz Carr. And we are Clash DVD. Well, that's some great live action from the first day. Now let's get over to Miss Liz Carr with some post round interviews. All right, this is Innova Champion Disc bringing you the post round interview. Now we've got Skeet Sienski with us. Now Skeet, you've been around this uh, tournament for a number of years. This is your first time playing though. Right. So can you tell us the difference between playing and being involved? I mean, is there more pressure, less pressure? Uh, well, yeah, a little more pressure. I mean, I got to deal with the OBs, but you know, <laughs> it's still fun. It's just a great time just being out here and meeting all the pros and uh, learning a lot from some of these guys that have played for much longer than I have and played in the, the big tournaments like this. So. It's a great time. Absolutely. Now, the other things that you're involved with, um, a lot of artwork here at the championship. What, what do you have in store for us this year? I'm sure it's a big secret, but... Well, it's, it, they've already kind of broken out some of it with the uh, hot stamp version. They, they have the uh, focus on the rings that they usually put out for the regular championships, and uh, we thought that'd be kind of a good commemorative disc for this year. And then Saturday, we're having a full-color version of that coming out. So. Awesome. I know we're all really excited to see it. Now, Skeet, where are you coming out of? Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow, not a long drive, and there's a lot of yeah. charlatans. Is that, is that what you call yourselves, yeah, charlatans? charlatans? Yeah. Lots of you guys coming up here. Oh, yeah. Or down here, excuse me. Uh, so do you rely on your countrymen to get you through this week? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I come out here, and I play with a lot of the Innova guys, you know, on a regular basis. And 
mean, a lot of practice helps, but once OB lines go up, it's a different game. So, you know, it's... And so your sure. projected score yeah. is... It's 82. 82. And how did you, what was your performance score oh, today? Oh, it was pretty, pretty abysmal, but, you know. Oh, yeah, no. That's okay. I'm, I mean, again, I'm having a great time. And just being out here with really great folks, so it just makes it, you know, worth coming out. So. Well, that's the story we've been hearing from a lot of people here. And, it's tough, yeah. you know, we're so glad that you're here and coming and now actually being able to play. Yeah. Thanks so much for chatting with Thank us, Thank you Steve. so much. All right, we've been able to catch up with Dave Felberg, our current leader, tied for the lead right now. Performance score six down. Well, that gives you a raw score of what? Uh, 56, my best round ever on the course. Best round ever. You're shooting it during the performance edition. Now, is there any uh, weird feelings you have about that? or? Um, you know, looking at the scores up there, it seems to be working out, except for the players who are around me, like the Dave Wiggins. I shouldn't be giving Wiggins four or five shots around. He's a young kid. He throws far. He's 10, 20 rated. We should be scratch even. I, I beat him today, but it says he tied me. Right. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. That, you know, it's a whole new format that we're working with, and yeah. it's truly a different atmosphere, a different type of a vibe that's that's going on. I mean, is do you see admiration on the cards of uh, the people that you get on, or is well, it? it was, I mean, uh, is it competitive, they were or competitive is it against their score? And I thought, you know, in general, we had a, what a two under, a one over, a six under, and then like a he didn't do very good on the back, but he was ten under on the front. Wow. Something compared to his performance base score. Wow. Well, you know, a lot of the players uh, sitting around that uh, rating, they shoot good and bad, and it just depends on which day they come out to play, which player comes out. So I did say in the, the pre-interviews, it would be tough to shoot your rating on this course. And I usually can't, you know, so I was happy to shoot my rating. And how I could be in the lead of this tournament when it's based on my rating at the top down. It's kind of bizarre. Well, it seems a little bit crazy, and I know there's a lot of other players that feel the same way as you do, but there's also a huge number of players that are just so happy to say that they can play with David Felberg. Now, you were out there for how long? How long did that round take you? <laughs> Five plus hours. Five plus hours here at the USDGC, and now tonight you have to put on a clinic as well. In 30 minutes, I'll be teaching everybody. All right, well, so, it seems like we have the right person to teach us. He is tied for the lead right now. Got lucky out there. If I throw 456s and win this thing, I only hear some crying back home. So don't cry back home as you didn't come because your rating was too high. <laughs> well, there you go. This is our post round interview sponsored by Innova Champion Disc with David Felberg. Thanks, Innova. Thanks to everybody. See you next round. Liz, <laughs> I don't know about you. I am tired. We are talking almost six hour rounds out there. You bet. And as every player comes in, that's the one thing that they say first. It has been a long day, a long round. They've watched a lot of red flags come out. You're not really hearing these great stories about, oh man, I got an eagle on this hole. You're hearing, oh man, I took a 10 on that hole. Well, it is the performance based 2011 USDGC, and the vibe is here. The players are having a ball. The experience, they are getting it full. And we got some live action today for you where you got to see three past champions play. And I think those guys were really holding their own with attitude, even with the elongation of every hole, it seems like. You bet, Billy. It's, it, it's a grind all the way to the finish, and whew, we're making it. This is only the first day. Well, we'll be here till the last putt drops Saturday afternoon. I'm Billy Crump. And I'm Liz Carr. And we're Clash DVD at the US DGC.